have um, started our program tonight with the Ave Maria by uh, Bach and Gunnel, and the song I'm just saying was uh, Verleihungsfried by Mendelssohn. Uh, our next song is going to be a selection of American spirituals, and this will be directed by Austin Baum. Welcome Tango friends. I hope you've had a wonderful week and also that you enjoyed watching the highlight of my week which was that delightful concert that uh, gave me my little bit of an American fix. I had fun talking with the boys afterwards and uh, also with the director and have a special connection to boys choirs because our son Stephen was a world-renowned Regensburger Domspatz which is the equivalent of the German Viennese Boys Choir. So that was so much fun to see, you know, to bring back those memories of, of his performances. Anyway, today we're going to do Daisy Chain. Daisy Chain is a tangle I think I developed in 2012, as you can see from my old, old, old uh, daily tangle journal. Here, it's really been inspired by uh, organza, which I use all the time when I want to do lacy things and loosen things up. But I, at the time, thought, okay, being me, loving flowers, I would make it into sort of a flower gar garland. And that's what I did. Now, since that time, I think I've gotten better at tangling and I'm adding a few little updates that I think are prettier because we're using some line weight and uh, I've added another line to make it look more dimensional. You'll see when I get that far. Keep it simple and do it in black and white and then you can go off on your own and explore. Most important is to start with a string in graphite. The string will be either a straight line like we're going to do here. It can be curvy. Uh, however, you want to wrap your garland in your piece. So today let's do just a straight line. 
approximately a straight line <laughs> with a wiggle in the middle. And the reason is very importantly, we are going to be doing an oral line. And if we did this in black, our oral line would cross over. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to just start off by that organza curve crossing over the line. Let's go ahead and or I'm going to keep it kind of thin. Some of my samples were a bit thick, but I think if we keep it thin, it'll be more dainty. So now I can go and pen in that bottom, which is basically my line. And of course I can clean it up a bit if it got like this is way high up here so I can clean that up, bring it down. And then we're going to do some spokes starting at the bottom of the arced hill. Always at the bottom we're going to go one straight up and then we're going to just fan out from that center point. And again, however close you make these lines is up to you. You can vary that. I'm going to do all this direction first. And then we're going to make our daisy on top. Oh, whoops, forgot to do these. Now we're going to just put our daisy on top and we're going to fan that as well. This one's kind of wonky, so I'm going to show you on here. It's basically like a big rice shape. And then we're just going to keep. This is the hardest part. It took me a long time. What I'm, I'm going to start a little ways over and try to always touch the other petal as you go down the line. Same here. See how I'm touching the side. So you've got to angle that and getting this angle right, it's, it's kind of tricky. It took me a lot of practice. So don't give up. You know, if you're just starting out, and this seems to be a little hard for you, you can make an arc from one side to the other to help guide where those petals are going. So I made mine a little longer, but it's still a guide. You do want to go in and fill in these little interstices, these little triangles that form when the petals butt up against each other. So that was my original daisy chain. It is pretty in its simplified way. Well, that's without the shading, of course, which we'll do later. But now I'm going to show you what I did to kind of beef it up. I you can also do line work in here instead of shading, just like we do with so many things. But I decided to make this a bit more three-dimensional by adding these lines. And you could continue going in the same orientation. I decided, well, let's do one this way and then do one the other way so you can see. So all of these are going to go this direction. And let's go this direction and see if we like this better. I'm doing this on the fly because on my samples you'll see that I did it this way. Yeah, that works. Kind of fans better. This is a little bit um, 
Yeah, I like this better actually. So the more you do things, the better you get at them. Or see new ways to approach. This is why we put that extra aura line in here so that we can weight these as well to make them almost look like another little daisy within the daisy chain. And that's my new version of daisy chain, the more three-dimensional one. And now I'm going to shade, and both of them would be shaded the same way. Because we have the aura line, and as you can see, always when there's dark, that's an indication of where your shading would go. So I'm going to put some graphite. Oh, that's just fine. I think I need to get a 2B or a 3B. That'll blend faster. Follow it all the way around. Let's treat this little snake, this curvy line, as a midrib, sort of. And as you know, when we have a midrib, we usually shade both sides of it, leaving the midrib itself unshaded. So now I'm going to go this side of the line. Since we added this weight weighted ink lines you almost don't need to shade but you know me in shading i think it's always an enhancement now we're just going to go back and blend and i'm blending up a little bit so i want to make these flowers look like they're kind of puckered in so i'm going to add some graphite right down here making sure to save out that center area in light. And if you get too much graphite, all you have to do, as you know, is lift. Finally, you can leave it like this if you want it to be a little bit more light. But as you can see on this sample here, and then I was playing around with the background, I added black, to those, um, to make them almost look like shells or um, undersides of the leaf petals and added a shimmer to that. And that goes like this. Just saving out a highlight. I don't like that gap, so I'm going to go like this. Makes it look more like a, a sunflower seed, right? So much more graphic, right? That's so beautiful and bold that way. And then, of course, you can embellish and do whatever you want. I think this was kind of a fun thing. I had I made a bookmark for my husband because he's run out of his bookmarks, even though we make millions of them in leather, and they're all in the container. <laughs> but... I had originally just wanted to do this, right? And I was just having so much fun. I thought, okay, I'm going to see what happens when I combine it with this tangle, which we just learned, our ray, because it's also a ray flower and a few ray buds. And then I didn't really like it, so I added the black background, and I didn't really like that. So I thought, okay, I'm going to experiment with putting another texture on top of that. And that's what I did with the jelly roll. And in this case, the jelly roll, as you know, kind of sinks into the black, but it's, it becomes a little more subtle, which I really like about that. Have fun. I hope you enjoy learning this tangle and incorporating it into your daily tiles like I've done so many times for years. Don't forget to sign and date. Put your chop. This one could use a little bit of something to ground it. And then I might go back in and actually do more tangling within. But I wanted you to see what that final daisy chain looks like without any distractions. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a great week and have fun tangling this tangle. Hit the bell if you want to be notified of my 
YouTubes coming out. Bye-bye for now.